I'm just thinking of it. We're live. We're live. That was so quick. It's still telling me that it's yep, preparing. Right yep. No, it's on. Hi, everybody. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, Megan? I'm doing good. How you are you? Doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's it's a day. It's a yeah. day, all right. <laughs> yes. I always feel like I'm racing around and racing around, but that's how days are at my house. I don't know. Yeah. It's always like that. It's kind of my life, actually. So see, today was a really chill day for me. There was not much going on, but that can be bad too, because I'm I'm used to my routine during the week. So the weekends are actually harder for me. Yeah. Because I'm used to doing certain things during the weekdays and I have to follow my routine and that's when I feel the best. So yeah. I get a little depressed on the weekends. I'm the worst now on Fridays because I don't have a nurse that comes for Ivy. So I don't go into the office, but I, I work from home and then I get distracted. I have like 20 things going on all over the place and none of it gets done. So I don't know. I need to get better at finishing at least one thing. And before I move on to another, I don't know how to retrain my brain. I kind of think I have ADHD. I really do. I don't mm -hmm. know. Does that come on later in life? Because I wasn't like this before. It really has come on worse as I've gotten older. So I don't know. Is that a thing? I don't know. I think it, it can come on later in life. How do, you, how do you grow into it? How does that happen? I don't know. I'm just getting my teeth. I don't know. Sending, I'm sending the email to the mystery author. But I've heard, I've heard a lot of adult habit yeah I wonder if it's like because of the way we live doing so much and you know putting so much pressure on ourselves to be doing so many things all the time is yeah. it like conditional or environmental you know we're doing it to ourselves I don't know yeah hi Carrie Ann hi Amanda hi Lawanda hi, Amy hi Amy you see my shark oh I was gonna get down but it's not gonna change it <laughs> it was a balloon it's so cute. I mean, it was it's really big, but I couldn't throw it away, so I hung it there. It was it's so cute. It makes me smile every time I see it. Another shark thing. <laughs> we saw this Louis Vuitton purse, and it looked like it had shark fins sticking out of it. They have an art series. They have artists design a Louis Vuitton bag, and they have six artists do it, and then they only sell three hundred of each one. So three hundred of each of six bags, but, um, oh no. It, and it turned out there was not shark fins. It was a uh, surfboard fin. So then I was like, I don't want it, but it was also ridiculously expensive. And it's not for a handbag. Yeah. <laughs> so now anyway, what else is going on? Oh, okay. So did, I'm just going to say it as people are coming around that if you didn't see the announcement that Angel and I made, because I've talked to a couple of people and they didn't know that we said that. Because we, you oh. know, it came on, we didn't tell everyone we were going to do that. We just popped on in the middle of a work day uh -huh. and told everyone that we're getting divorced. <laughs> Mommy and daddy are getting divorced. No. So we're going to um, split up for Shark's Edge series. And I'm going to write that one myself moving forward. And We'll still do uh, Secrets of Stone together and hopefully some more stuff in the future. But just for Shark's Edge, I'm going to take off with that one on my own. So, yeah, just, it's not some big, we had no fight, no, nothing like that. It was just, it's just uh, not, it wasn't working with both of us, you know, contributing on that one. Sometimes the story, that, that series has so many moving parts to it. Trying to write with two people, putting their two cents yeah. on it, it was like, Oh, it was like we would get each other's, you know, chapters back and be like, no, that is not what I just said. That. You know, it, it was too much yeah. having to backtrack too many times. So, yeah, I can't not imagine. Working. Yeah. I was just listening to a podcast today and it was the, an interview with another partner, you know, two authors that partner. And uh -huh. it sounds so much like her and I, that the styles, because they were talking about the one author was really strong in dialogue and, you know, the quick pace and the dialogue. And then the other author was really good at the, the flow and the poetic, uh, you know, just painting the scenery. 
and that is so much us, you know, and that kind of relationship seems to work because when you put it together, it's like this perfect whole picture. So yeah, yeah, they, they found that too. They were talking about that. So it was interesting, but. Well, I'm excited for more Secrets of Stone. Yeah, so that that is supposed to be a 12 book series uh-huh. and we have nine so far. So what we envision is, cause that's two books per couple where Shark is three. So we hope to do one more couple and then one book at the end to wrap it all up. Mm-hmm. Now it's been a long time since we've visited with everyone. So I still think about them all, all the time. Cause I listen to it all the time to go to sleep. Cause Jason Clark's voice is just like, I told Amy, cause we always talk about, um, you know, uh, audio books and I said, his voice to me is like coming home. It's just, it's oh, a, I love that. Yeah. It is just so comforting. I can be like, so worked up about something. I just listened to him and it's like, oh, you know, just instant relaxation. So I don't know. Yeah. That's, I don't know. Always. And it doesn't matter what he's reading, but you don't know. It's just so comforting. That's the first audiobook I ever listened to is his voice. So maybe that's why it's just like sentimental too. Maybe. Who does who does Book Boyfriend? That was my first audiobook. Jason Clark. Jason Clark. Okay. Yeah. 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 He just he did he did a good job on that. Yeah. That was I love that book. That's like one of my favorites. I loved it was actually when I would be on the way to and from yeah. you. I remember I would listen to that book. I remember that. Somebody yeah. <laughs> So I saw also an update on Therese Plummer. She posted a little video and it's her talking. So it was so good to see her. I got all oh, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. So it was so good to see her and her being inspirational. Like I'm, I can just imagine, but I, I know she probably has some hard days too with all that. Yeah. So mm. I'm so glad she's doing okay though. Yeah. Yeah. She was talking about, she was just at a point where she could she had permission to start trying to walk again. So she was so excited. Oh, wow. Yeah, she started crying while she was talking. And oh, I, started oh, crying. Wow. I started crying about everything now. Yeah. So that's what to me the other day. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm like, just forget it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, everything is so ridiculous. All right, well, our author is in the waiting room. So I will introduce her, but I wanted to remind everyone to ask questions. And at the end, we do a giveaway. Oh, yeah. So make sure you stay till the end. And don't forget to send in the questions. I'm actually writing the questions down. And then I'll ask them, like, as the conversation allows. So I try to get to them all. But but we'll see how the time goes. <laughs> all right. Is everybody ready? Tonight's mystery author is an award-winning BDSM romance author. She writes mainly contemporary, although she's been known to dabble in the medieval and Regency eras. She loves writing emotionally intense storylines with occasional WTF moments, but no matter how messed up the characters, a happily ever after is guaranteed. She also writes non-BDSM romance under the pen name Molly Joseph. Please welcome, dun dun dun, Annabelle Joseph. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Hi, we need a picture of her right now. I need a live shot. Where is she? She's here. There she is. Oh my god! Because I just listened to that uh, full concerto, and I was like, oh shit! I'm gonna die. <laughs> I, mean, I, I sent it to my husband. I'm like, you need to listen to this. So good. Turn up. You got to turn up your volume so we can hear you. There you are. Better. It's a little better. We're all like, is she talking? <laughs> Why am I seeing all three of you right now? What is going on here, Megan? We, I can hear you. It's a little echoey and it's very low. Maybe if you have headphones. Uh, Oh, there, that's better right now because see, you just came on full screen before she was just in this little box. It it just was not acting Uh, right. Zoom wasn't acting right, but now it's it's gotten his act together here. Better. Yeah. 
Cassie is like when her mic isn't picking up fully, she's not coming onto the screen because now oh, she's not, yeah. you know what I mean? You know how you come on full when I don't know. Yeah. The audio is not, let me see. Do you have your buds? So she used to hang up and come back. Like, okay, Let me know if you need me to send the invitation again. Yeah, it'll be the same one in your email. Okay. The only thing is, like, I don't have a um, folder for my phone. Let's see if I can, like, prop it up somewhere. So not, it's not, like, bobbing around the whole time. All right, let me see if I can join on here. I love those glasses. Oh, thank you. I'm always looking for new frames. I, I hold out as long as I can during these things before I put mine on. Oh, it's already a better picture too. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, but now hang up on your computer. Okay. Ugh, yeah, it's making it horrible. Okay. All right. Oh, oh much better. better. Is that better? Yes. I don't know what is this thing with this freaking laptop. I bought it. It's supposed to be like a really great laptop and it will not do Zoom properly. I'm like, ah. Zoom is very. Oh, well, I'm glad we fixed it. it. We had a heck of a time at first, but we got it together after a while. All right. Hopefully it's actually going to do this. There so we go. I mean, erasing your praises on that damn little series <laughs> there. Oh my God. I was like, Next one, next one, next one. At first I was just, I think I got the first one because I am obsessed with Connor Crace currently. I go in these like spurts with narrators and I get like uh -huh. full board with them and he's my guy right now. And so he, is like, he, so he doesn't know that. Well, he might know because I'm kind of stalking him on Twitter, but that's okay. And I like send little weird messages and he's like, okay. <laughs> you know, that, like serious like um, profile picture. Just oh like, yes, he does, <laughs> yeah. And you get these little hints of him and you're like, oh, I just know he's like this sexy guy. And ah. I saw a live with him on um, Viviana Iso did a live with him. Oh, really? Yeah. And he had his baseball hat pulled down and you kind of see him a little bit. He's got these little dimples and yeah, but you ah. don't get his full face. He's kind of I you know, doing, like, ah. I, I think Jason's kind of doing that right now. It's too, he's trying to stay out of the light, you know, but at first he was doing stuff. Like when he was with Lauren Blakely so much, he was always, you know, getting pictures. Right. And stuff, but yeah, I saw two videos with him so I can yeah. put like face to the yeah, voice. I like doing that, but. I know um, I do too, but I also understand their need for privacy and stuff, yeah. especially as they get so popular. I wonder if they have stalkers and things. You oh, know? I'm sure they do because women Poor can't God. get it through their head. That's not really him. He's just yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then when you have the voice in your in your ears, you're just like, I'm in love with this guy, even though you like yeah. don't know him at all. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, thank or, you for to that. Yeah, Ava oh. was, was the best. She came. I know the guys who need to do this, and I was like, girl, you just go and do it. Yeah, it is all yours. She is amazing. I met her at uh, mm, something in Vegas. We were doing it, and they had um, Lydia had a bunch of you know the narrators there, and it was just so fun to chat with them all and get to know them more that was my first time and I'm such an audio freak so getting to that was like a fangirl you know I was signing but then I had these fangirl things going on and I just had um Zach Weber do um Sharp's Edge and so it was like um, you know getting to like hang out with him and stuff and oh it was just so <laughs> yeah oh, oh, it was so good time. Yeah, yeah I mean that'd be a really hard job I'm just so impressed with imagine and can yeah. you imagine like the the care they have to do. This is like a tool now. So right. careful right. all the time. Careful. Oh, I can't be in a smoky environment. Can't be too hot, too cold. I mean, so many things you don't even think about. Right. Yeah. And just the way that they read through. Um, I had somebody do my Mephisto stories with. I don't know oh, Club Mephisto. I love that one too. I'm like, so I'm going to like fangirl on you all the <laughs> place here. It's going to be a little embarrassing. Yeah. So the guy who did it was like, really liked the book so um I feel like he really like when he was delivering some of the lines I was like you nailed that that was amazing and so like he yeah. was there 
it's something about, yeah, they're just so good at what they do. God bless them. I, I wrote a line in a book that I wrote and, it, and the girl said, I mean, I don't need the whole protocol and a cage under the bed. And my editor goes, I don't know what this means. And it was because of Molly's lips. And I was like, just don't worry about it. People will know what I'm talking People about. People will know about the cage. Yeah, just, just, it's just okay. As long as the grammar's fine, just move on, you know? And yeah. he left it in, but it was like, because I'm of that. that out. <laughs> It's very oh, you know, awesome. powerful moment there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so funny. So I'm going to go back to the um, full concerto. Are you musical? That was very, yeah. like, it seemed like right in there. Well, let me explain about me and music. So my father was a very accomplished, is a very accomplished musician. He's pretty much retired now. But so I grew up around all these musical people and like, courses and musical theater and all this stuff and he would be doing solos and he's a pianist like he can play anything you put in front of him like it's a book he's reading um and then my brother um is a cellist like he's amazing and he's a quartet and all this stuff so um I myself love music and I've tried many many times to become good at instruments and I have not been able to (laughs) <laughs> I really think you have it or you don't. It just seems like it's there or it's not. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, it's like reading music is just too, like I did, I finally got involved in the chorus because like singing, I can kind of, I can do it in a group. I can't be a solo singer or anything. So I did that. But even then, I, like I'm trying to get better at reading music and I'm like, why is this not like, I can't do it. And then my son at school was in the band, took up alto sax and he's just like, yeah, I just, it's, it's easy for him. And I'm like, oh, how did every single person get this easy to read music gene? And it skipped me when I so desperately want to play an instrument and be good at it, but I kind of just don't want to be. But to, I, to your question, I do, I'm around a lot of musical people yeah. and I love the arts. Very I much. have, um, I tried, my, my son was in choir. That was his thing. And I was just so moved constantly by the being around the music and you know, choir's a little different than chorus. It's just different kind of music that they're singing. And, you know, I was just so moved all the time. And I, I loved going to his performances and being around all of that. And so I decided I was going to take up piano. As an adult, how hard can it be, right? Oh, no. That's like learning a new language. Girl, like, you know, it's I really hard. Time. Like, I'm going to learn piano. I just, I'll start out slow. It'll come it's so hard. It's so hard. It is so hard. And even like my hands at age 50 are no, not doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not going to happen. They are doing their own thing. I can type like a bean, but that wasn't going to be doing it. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and you know, typing is like, I have this hanging thing going on. Not that, not that oh gosh, no, it was not. It's not a natural. <laughs> it's no. so hard. And like, I did it so badly. Bad. All the things, because like, I mean, I took lessons when I was younger, because my dad was like, you know, all my kids are going to play the piano, whatever. And the other kids, you know, I had two brothers, and they both did fine. And I was just like, it, there were so many tears. I was just like, I cannot do this. Yeah, I don't know. it was yeah. bad. I wanted to, I, I got a piano, I did the whole thing. And now it's just oh. there and my son's friends come over and play and I'm like, just stop it. Yeah, it's like rubbing it in. Oh. Yeah, I didn't want to hear it anymore. And then the people who just sit down and kind of like can pick out a song. Oh, like, that's my best like, friend's daughter. Do, yeah. you know, he's like, he's gonna, you know, he'll like by ear play he's stuff. And I'm, like, Stop and I'm like, just, oh, fine. It's fine. It's yeah, it's fine. fine. It's okay. The world needs those people too. Cause it does. Sure it's, it's amazing. The rest of us can just admire. It's a good thing, man. So what are you working on right now? So I actually just finished something. It's for a, um, it's for an anthology. It, I just was able to talk about this like last week. They said they gave us the green light to talk yeah. about it. Um, it's called Christmas at the Club. And um, so every author in this anthology is somebody who has a book that has been set in like a nightclub. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, yeah, I have several of those. So um, but I haven't told anybody yet which club I decided to write about. So on my Facebook page, if anyone's interested, I have like a little contest rolling. Oh, to, like, yeah like which club did Annabelle write about? So I'm going to do the big reveal on October 1st. And, and then that book comes out November 30th. And it's all like, obviously this is a BDSM club. Yeah. So it's all like BDSM authors. 
um, off the top of my head, I know like L.K. Shaw, Claire Thompson, uh, Tara Crescent, and um, Mayburn, like, uh, you know, all the- I haven't talked to her in so long, oh my God. I know, it's like, I remember I used to see a lot of them at, oh God, it's been so long. I, I, I used know. to go to um, Authors After Dark, is that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of them so used to be there. I saw you at Shameless, like two years ago, I think. Yes, I did Shameless yeah. too. I'm not doing it this year though. I, I heard it was there last year, so that's not. Yeah, 2022 is yeah. going to be. But yeah, so not the last one, but the one before that, I <laughs> saw you there. I remember I was talking with you and uh, uh, mm, oh my gosh, Belinda. No, Belinda. Is that uh, what the name? Oh my gosh, I can't think of her name. It'll come. <laughs> I, I, I think about I, There's so many authors there that you just like, you're like, ah, who did I talk to? Have you co-written anything with someone ever? Um I haven't. I, I haven't. An anthology I saw you in with because I saw you standing there with her and I thought, well, that makes perfect sense that you guys would be standing there together. I, oh, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Mm. Oh. <laughs> No, and you can't think of her name either. The one who writes the hockey books. Bianca. No, it Sutherland. wasn't her. It wasn't Bianca. No, no. Okay. No. Yeah, I don't it know. It was the one that, who, who wrote that safe word, Kara Cardone? <gasps> oh, Candace Blevins. That's who you were. Yes. 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 I just know book titles. I think, I think she's in this Christmas at the club too. Yeah. 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 Um, that book they, fucked my head up. I'm sorry. That book just, boof. <laughs> Well, I have a funny story about that one because she asked me to beta read that one and yeah. my kids are younger then and I remember I was at a skating rink and I'm like yeah I'm just gonna beta read this book while I'm sitting here I hope it wasn't this scene where it was know, in boxes because was I like, couldn't sleep that night I told Candace like how dare you do you realize I'm sitting there like about to lose my mind in front of like this birthday party of yeah. all these children oh it was so hot anyway yeah it was just very intense Oh like yeah, no judgment. It's just a very intense, like intense stuff going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if she'll bring back like some of you know my favorite um, doms from that series. We'll see. Yeah, they were like mostly. I feel like my nose ring is coming out. They they were like oh. in their own house, you know, because they were like really up to some shenanigans. Those guys. I don't think they were out in a club though. I don't remember that they were. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Going back to trying to remember all mine that had a club because I had four in my contest that I remembered. Um, I can only really have space for Molly's Lips because I love <laughs> that series so much. I really did. I just thought it was so beautiful. You know, oh, the, yeah. the devotion and, oh, I cried. And, you know, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read, but for my readers that are here, if you haven't read that series, please go read it. It's just lovely. It really is. It's so beautiful. What series is it? Someone's asking what series I need that in my life. It it's starts called, with Molly's Lips, right? Uh, well, it starts with a book called Club Mephisto. And then Molly's Lips is the same. Molly's Lips is Club Mephisto, but told through the, the, the masters. Like Club Mephisto is all in the slave's point of view. And then Molly's Lips is told the same okay. story. You're seeing it from the master side of it, which totally brings a whole new, you know, patina yeah. to everything. Because in the first book, you're like, "How dare he!" Yeah. And then, then when you read what he's thinking, yeah, you're you like, see the oh, "Motivation," and, yeah. and it just so, tears you I, up. I had to write that because everybody was getting kind of angry after yeah. Club. They're like, "He's such a beast," and oh my god, I can't believe what he did to her. Whereas in my mind, I knew like. Oh, he is awesome. So then I, I think to... I read Molly's lips first for whatever it, it, reason, just yeah. by accident. It's fine. I think yeah. by accident. And then if someone yeah. who gets really angry easily, maybe read Molly's lips first. And then <laughs> <laughs> it's a little yeah. no, and then yeah. it was the third um takes place a couple years after the first two. And that's like a the first two are novellas, and then Burn for You is like the a full length like romance, happy ever after. Yeah. So. Oh. Yes, please check it out. I'm going to have to go do a reread. Who's your narrator on that? Um, his name was Rex, Sec, not, not Sex Smith, <laughs> Rex Silversmith. It was some, it was some sexy name, like, yeah. um, and he's not a real, like, well-known. Yeah, um, I don't, I haven't heard that name before. I actually found him, like, because in the beginning, I was kind of having to find, like, 
people who were really new, you know, I couldn't afford the really established ones. And I just found him and, and he's in something about his audition. There was just this rasp to his voice and this like feeling. And I was like, I, this is the guy. And then, uh, act, well, see, Club Mephisto was done by a woman. And then he did the one that was from the master's point of view, Molly's lips. And then Burn For You, he came back and did that one. And, oh my God, he just had me crying. And, oh, uh, no, you and, had to cry. <laughs> you, but hearing what? like, well, you know that because you, you love to listen. You're yeah. a big listener of books and it brings so much to this, the words, you know, like I'm an author. So of course I love the words. I know the words are great. And I know a lot of people who only just want the words on the page. They want their own, their own voice to say it. But when I listen, like I've been won over to audiobooks because now I say like they add such a dimension. Um, sometimes even, I don't know if you've had this experience, but like they bring a dimension to something that you didn't even think about when you were writing it. Right. But their voice will bring out this something that you're like, oh, wow. And you just get that chill, you know. My favorite when I'm listening to them reading something I wrote and they mm -hmm. get it exactly what I meant. You know yeah. I mean, right yeah. at it exactly the way I meant it. And I'm like, yes. And so that's what the guy kept doing. So I was like, I was like, he's happy. like, I love this. I love this. I, I knew he must have read it and loved it. So I was like, that's the only way. Yeah, he connect with, with it. And like, well, you know, so. Thank you. You know? Yeah. You. It was it amazing. Makes me so happy. Yeah. yeah. I love that moment. It just makes me so happy. I oh. had that with Jason Clark. I mean, you know that there are some that they're just so head and shoulders above the rest you know because right. they, they, they're you you just feel they're they're actors mm -hmm. they have that exactly. quality in there with it and oh my god I just bring it to life it's my favorite that's all I do I don't watch tv or anything and so that's like my relaxation mm -hmm. yeah yeah, oh, that's neat. yeah, yeah. I would definitely want to ever buy it and like I was telling Ava the whole like them doing the quartet series like the quartet novellas this is this, it's all for me it's almost like having my book being made into a movie you know mm -hmm. because that's the closest I'm probably going to get right to have the actors doing each character and oh I just was so excited about it so oh and then those four together it was like oh my god I'm going to die right now <laughs> yeah it was a good time oh it was a good time <laughs> that last book I was like I'm gonna die <laughs> yeah it was good that was good. It's everyone, go it's get that one too. Oh my gosh. Everyone use your credits and go get that one. <laughs> <laughs> but she was telling me how like a lot of it, they were not, it's the same room, like even building off each other. They were like, it was edited together. And I'm like, how do they make it Isn't sound that like crazy? So amazing. Oh, crazy. Talent. Yeah, I think, and those four, for sure. Because I listen to a lot of audiobooks. They've worked together, all of them before. So you know that they have, I mean, Connor's kind of the new guy on the block, but they have that timing. And I don't know, I don't know what kind of prep they do together. Like, I, I really want to start um, weaving them into this because I do this every month and we're into our second year now. So I'm going to start, I've had um, Erin Mallon come on once because she does the one series that I have. And so and I love her so much. And she's such a lovely woman. She is so kind. And she's an author now too. And so we were getting like hitting her, you know, from both angles, from the audio and from her author side. But um, right. yeah, I'd like to have the narrators come on a little bit more so I could start picking their brains. Ah, that's right. I act a little normal and not freak out, but. I know, that's the thing. Hard, I get excited. Like, oh, like yeah. growing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's fun though. I mean. I don't know. It's yeah. I know this is for all readers, right? Yeah. yeah. For all readers. So what do you do for fun? Um, well, like I said, I'm always like singing along and doing music, even though I'm not that great at it. In fact, I'm super sad because I was part of this community chorus and we had to stop meeting because of COVID. Yeah. And I just found out last week that I was hoping that we would get back, like maybe even because we do it by the semester system. I was hoping even for spring semester, we get back together, but they're like, no, not till fall of 2022. <laughs> it's so sad. And it seems um, so far away. I know. So I do that. A year from now. I, yeah. And see, I told, I was telling my husband earlier tonight, it's like, that was my, because we're writers, right? We all stay home mostly in front of our computer all day. Yeah. Um, 
And like going out every Monday for chorus was like my social time. That was my time to be with other people who were like me. And, you know, yeah. I really miss that, you know, and we don't really have a big online, like they have a Facebook group, but nobody really posts there. So it's like, but I'll tell you what, like when we get back together in fall of 2022, it's going to be like this incredible reunion. It's yes. going to be like everything you know, is going to be like that. Like, I can't imagine the first book signing. It's going I, to be crazy. People are going to be, well, crying, yeah. going to be nuts because that that was for me, like I have a full time day job still. And so I do get out all the time. We did stay home like the I do accounting. So the um all the administrative stuff we stayed home when the sales and the manufacturing came in so right. we worked the whole time but some of us stayed home to work and um and it was maybe like six months of that but mm -hmm. um we came back in and and i was glad to get you know back into work but right. um you know, hell i'm going with all of this i don't even know but yeah, I know when we get back out to the signings, it's just going to be. Yeah, like, just I would see those women more than I even see my family. Yeah, because they're all over the country, my family members. Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. and so I would see, like, you know, my writer friends more than I'd see even my mom and dad half the time, so. I know, see, my parents are in Florida, too, so they're like, don't come here. There's COVID everywhere, and so I'm always worrying about them. And so, I mean, they're vaccinated, but I'm just like, ah, Florida is everything I see about Florida. I'm like, people that are vaccinated getting oh. COVID, this Delta mm -hmm. thing, so I'm like, oh, what is yeah. that? Yeah, so it's crazy. I'm ready for it to be over. Anyway, I so I fall 2022 on my calendar. But in the meantime, since I can't really go out a lot, I've been doing, like, crafting. I think a lot of people have started doing yeah finding some new hobby right yeah i've been sewing stuff i learned how to knit i oh, did cross yeah, nice. like really i used to cross stitch when i was a girl and into when i was in the military i did it all the time just passing time yeah it's because it's almost like you can almost go into like a hypnosis type of because oh, with yeah. cross -stitch, it's so repetitive yeah. so i've actually really done i've done like way too much of that in fact I felt guilty because I got way behind in my writing schedule <laughs> because I just put in, I just, I think a lot of us, yeah. uh, I can't do it right now. Is, and, um, but that's what I was doing is cross stitching. But look, fortunately, recently I've been getting, I think being part of this anthology, I almost said no at the beginning. So I was like, uh, but then I was like, I need to force my, I need to do this. So I need to right. start, force myself to start writing. And it did, it kind of opened up a dam so now I'm definitely back to writing every day yeah all that stuff I hear so. you I hear you on that Megan do we have questions yes we do but oh my gosh I just want to say I'm laughing at the comments because people are talking about Amanda said make sure you swipe out of your audiobook because it will start playing on you in the middle of a pizza place <laughs> and I, I have heard so many funny laugh stories laugh. I've heard so many funny stories about that like <laughs> People will say they took their car in to get repaired and they took their phone out, but because of Bluetooth, they went to like listen on their, you know, ear pods in the waiting room of the car place, but it didn't connect to their AirPods. It connect back to their car in the service bay. Oh, and yeah. hearing her say, him say, I'm going to eat your cunt or something. Cunt, cunt, get, you know, like boo, boo, boo through the, Jesus God. You know. <laughs> Can the lady our the car Toyota? Our when you start it, it will connect to whoever's Bluetooth it reaches first in the house. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to make sure. Cause I also watch, I also watch porn on my phone sometimes. And I'm like, that's all I need is for the kids to start the car in the morning on their way to school and have this, uh, uh, the speaker. So yeah, it's uh, Bluetooth is terrible. Where do you get your ideas for sex scenes? I'm like porn. <laughs> it's porn. And they're like staring at you. I'm like, what you don't watch porn? I mean, what are why are you staring at me like that? I don't no. understand what's happening right now. I'm from my own life. I have to get ideas. I can't I only get my body in so many positions right now. Okay. Exactly. I'm, I'm getting old. No. <laughs> you have to get that inspiration going and all that kind of stuff. So and I'm kind of wary of just reading. I mean, I do read other BDSM like erotica authors, but I'm always afraid I'm gonna accidentally steal something, you know, like I'm gonna love it. <laughs> It's going to be my subconscious. And then like 
two years later, I'll be writing and be like, wow, this is such a hot scene. Like not realizing I totally stole it from. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Cause I feel like that I have done something like that. Like I love something so much and I can see it echoing in my own. Right. And yeah, you kind like of an echo of it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh God, that's sounds a you're little like, too much too. <laughs> Uh, call it a mentorship <laughs> i don't know uh, go right. megan let's get it annabelle um several people said they are new to you so where should they start so i always tell people if they're if they're new i have three i have three tiers of books to start with so the number one book i tell people to start with is waking kiss so this is a bdsm romance it's very angsty, but also very fun to read. Um, and it's a short series. It's a two book series. They both stand alone. The Waking Kiss is the first one. Fever Dream is the second one. And they're also both in audio. So if you're an audio person. Um, and that, so that's just, you know, I, I'm a medium kink lover, Bova. If you are hardcore kinky like you want to go straight for the hardcore then i say club mephisto start with that you know read club mephisto or read like the Cajun the bed. <laughs> go from there yeah and then um if you are into i also write historical kinky books i did so, not know you wrote historicals that, I do. doing that i'm like what because i was thinking it might be jenna jacob coming on and then she said that i'm like what no i don't know who this is now <laughs> But see, the historic ones are more like spanking and like, um, cause it's spanking and them are kind of two different worlds. So the historicals, I always say, start with um, disciplining the Duchess. Like that's fully a standalone. So you can read that and be like, oh, I like this or I don't like it. If you like it, then I have this um, properly spanked series, which is four books in the original properly spanked series. And then what I'm working on kind of now is that there's this called properly spanked legacy, which is the grown up children of the couples in the first book. So the first book took place in like the 1790s and other first series. And then the new properly spanked legacies is like the um, 1820s and it's their kid, you know, grown up children starting their relationships. And so I'm two books into that series. So there's lots of that if you're into that. And I have lots of others. And by the way, um, I finally fixed my website and got everything on there. So um, it's not a huge undertaking, and especially if you're doing it. I have, yeah, I have a big backlist, but it's yeah. all it's all um, laid out now in like the series. You can go read the series description in each book, and I also have a big page with all my standalones. And you have a ballet one, don't you? Oh, uh, what now? You have a ballet one. Do yeah, that's ballet. The about oh mercy maybe that's what it is i'm just picturing the with, cover and the girls the, like on point on the, front, the ballet slippers on the front yeah, yeah yeah that was mercy that's really really dark um I, that that's probably, probably the one i read then that would yeah, be one I read. <laughs> that's probably one of my most popular books but it's also the book that upsets people <laughs> annabelle do you have a facebook reader group Yes, it's called Fanabelle's. Oh, Wendy just commented that Fanabelle's. Okay, because people were asking. So I wasn't sure if you sent that to me in the link. I'll try to find it and link it to the okay, to them yeah. right now. Yes, we are we are the Fanabelle's. Wendy is my Fanabelle leader. That's cute. Uh, Hi, Wendy. So what is this you're saying? Spanking was different to that crowd in the 1700s. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, in the 1700s, they didn't have a ton of, like, it's just different. They don't have, like, so when I was growing, like, I have I grew up, it's weird to say I grew up kinky, but, like, from the very earliest sexual experience I was having, I was very kink. I was always been into it. And, um, but I started out in the spanking world. So this, in the spanking world, they have their things, but, like, master slave, like, um, whips and chains and all that is really not it. Like their kind of things are like, do you like it over the knee or do you like it bent over the bed or what are your favorite implements? And it's much more like they might have like a head of household type of thing where, you know, one person spanks and one person is the spanking. And the whole thing is drawn out. It's like this whole 
procession, right? Like the yeah, whole, yeah, like very like they get, get very much into the whole like nits, you know, nooks and crannies of every spanking, and um, and so that world was different from like the BDSM kind of dynamics. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they of course, you know, a lot of BDSM people will spank, mm-hmm. but you don't. But there are a lot of spanko people. You call them spankos <laughs> who are like, oh, I'm not into BDSM. Yeah, like for them, it's a completely different right. thing. So, but I'm into both. I mean, obviously, you can be into both. So, who doesn't love a good spanking? Seriously, I know that was my right? first. Like, <laughs> I found BDSM like after I was totally into spanking. So. But I'm your age, Victoria. So when I started out, like I was sending away from the back of Cosmo, um, like you had to send away in the mail to get, like there was no, you didn't just go online to like spanking tube or whatever. Right. Like, you, like hunt it down, either going to like a sex shop or. I right. remember yeah. the internet being invented. Yeah. I, I tried to explain this to my kid and he's like, what? And like personal ads, like you had to get a PO box Yes. at the freaking post office yes. to in search of yeah. that's how they started in yeah of. and you and like it you had real to risk. Your box and get your mail like to stay yeah. anonymous or whatever it's none of this like just go online people have it so easy these days. i know you had to go out of your house to meet someone uh, yeah exactly you even go find them <laughs> yeah. and you know you'd have to meet people and like try to figure it out really figure out what their kinks were whereas now you know you just go straight to like you know that area of the fetish site or whatever right right it's so much easier it it, it definitely is but i mean you still get the same same problems like oh creepy people were Mm -hmm. you know in our time too and as they are now probably more now at least in our time like people couldn't send you like dick pictures and stuff (laughs) it's so funny that you bring that because like a week ago, I got my first dick pic ever. Did you? Not from my husband. Yes, just a random oh, yeah. on my phone. I'm like, oh no, no. <laughs> Up and there it was. I don't want that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Did you like write back? Like, Stop it. I did, no, I delete, block, buy, go away. No. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, I told my husband today. He's like, what? I said, I get a dick pic. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I'm like, what were you going to do? Respond to him? Get, don't do this to my wife. I mean, I deleted it and I blocked it. You know, it's gone. Oh, that's so funny. Hilarious. Like, Amy's like, ever? Really, Victoria? That, that's ever. your first one? Not even, ever. That was my first one ever. <laughs> oh, wow. I like, never got Angel one. and I always joke around. We're like, why don't we get dick pics? I don't understand. I I mean, I've never gotten one, actually. Yeah. So. so You're lucky. Now everyone's get, if people see this, they're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna send it. Yeah. No. Okay. Don't send me anymore, I'm, y'all. I don't want one. Well, I Kelly's also never had one. had one. What? Okay. Kelly's never had one either. Yeah, it's just I think people like our age, because I, I know Kelly's in my age bracket. It's not that's not people don't do that at our age. It's crazy. Yeah. I think that's like a younger thing. Yeah. But they're not, they're too dumb. Can you imagine taking a picture of your genitals and sending it to someone? (laughs) Risk. There are so many risks involved. There's so much to lose by doing that in this world, in my real life world. Oh, Jesus, God. I I have two plus. I would like, there's this website called FetLife, and I used to be on there a lot. And it's like Facebook for kinky people, but you go to people's profiles and they'll have like 88 just pictures of their dick and I'm like these all look the same why do you have 88 of them you know because like, on this one I'm just a degree and a half to the yeah. left and you can see that <laughs> I'm just like no it's not okay but everybody has their thing you know whatever oh my god and now with the scars <laughs> I had a double mastectomy a year ago it's like a battle zone in this body Jesus uh, nobody wants to see that you're like only hubby sees it Oh, oh, nobody wants to see that. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> no. God. Anyway. I just don't, I'm not like, even if I did have like erotic pictures online, it would be like, it wouldn't be like, this is my full naked body. It would be like a lacy bra or something or like, you know, it's like. And me. my head would be cut off. Yeah. You never know it was me. Party at least. Don't just like stick it down there and just take it. Oh, but. And well, my husband and I got into this conversation, like, 
does that work for people? Like, <laughs> I'm going to send you randomly a picture of my dick and it'll ignite. I don't, that, I don't know if maybe it just turns on. Maybe we'll go out on a date. How does that work? I mean, do, do people do that? <laughs> like if you sent out 300 dick pics, how many returns do you get? What's your, like, what's yeah, your return like, on investment here? You see, this is my mind. What's your return on investment? I know someone who got so many, she started to rate them like on her Instagram stories. Why was she getting so many? Uh, she, I don't know. So she would rate them like and talk, talk badly about the pictures, yeah. but guys were into that. So they started to pay her for rating. Oh, so then they wanted it. So that's yeah, then they wanted to be for. rated. That's they cool. liked it. They liked for her to talk badly about their dick pics. So mm-hmm. I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my oh, god, man. What are you gonna do? I have the best conversations on Mystery Author Challenge. <laughs> right. All right. What else you got? Okay. Kelly wants to know what's one thing on your bucket list? Something fun or crazy? Me or Candle? both of you? Um, I don't know. I want I just got this wild hair up my butt lately to learn how to line dance. <gasps> I, I don't even I don't even like country music <laughs> but this is my like in my head I want to learn how to do that and you, know you know what you can do if you don't like country music I discovered around where I live and they probably have this where you live too they have a Scottish dancing club and it's not like I'm dancing it's more like square like, dancing in a way like but it's, not, dance, but it's like stuff. yeah it's like river, it's not even river it's like they go through these like reels have you yeah, ever seen yeah yeah see pride and prejudice and how they do those dances i haven't the, seen that movie yeah um but it's real. it's like it's like you dancing, but like old scottish stuff so yeah so i have we have this little challenge going on we both have to come together tomorrow night with three ideas on scraps of paper and we're going to pick one and we have to commit to it for three months because <gasps> we have been working like dogs it's all we do is work we work all day and we work all night I work all day and then I go home and write all night my husband works all day and then he goes home and works all night and it's it, it's ridiculous this can't be like what life is about you know all we do is work and I said this has to stop like we have to stop this you know and so this is my idea and he's on board with it so we're gonna find out what the thing is tomorrow night we'll find out what we pick so I have to bring three ideas. You have to bring three ideas and then I just randomly pick. So <laughs> we'll that see. is such a good idea. I said we have to give it like three months before we don't want to. We can either then stick with it or pick a new one because you know you yeah. don't know if you hate something like right away. But right, yeah. I'm gonna put line dancing online on one of mine. <laughs> and like you know what? That's good exercise too. That's what I figured too. Yeah, good social time. Yeah. So. That and there's amazing. a place right down the street from my house because I don't live in like a major metropolitan city, but there is a, a, a country western place, right? Like it's like a gigantic bar. It's not like just a little bar. It's like the size of a, They're I don't giant. even know what, like a shopping mall. The thing is huge. Mm-hmm. They have to be because when they do that line dancing, like people, huge crowds of people yeah. do it together. Yeah. I've been there a few times. I mean, I've never, I didn't really get into it, but I've been at two line dancing clubs before. And it, and it is, I hear it's addictive. Like once you get into it, you are. It getting- looks so fun. Well, yeah. I see videos on YouTube. I'm like, I want to do that. But I'm an idiot when it comes to dancing. Like I'm going to trip over myself. Oh, you will Maybe hurt that. someone else, but it can happen. We'll see. We might mm-hmm. not pick that one. So now i'm gonna have to like post what we pick because everyone's gonna be like what happened yes what happened now on sunday? Said already been picked so you could talk about it but what's yours yeah what's on your bucket list uh well so one of my bucket list items is like okay so when my children were younger they all did like musical theater camp mm-hmm. and it was so fun like living vicariously through them and so i so desperately want to be in a musical someday oh, yeah. But, you know, I'm 50 years old, not a great dancer. <laughs> I mean, I can be in the chorus. It's okay. They're in the back. That's the thing. I don't want a lead role. I just want to be like in the chorus. But three. that's what I'm running into. Most of these musical theater productions are like cut off at like 21 years old or younger. Like, because you can't have the older people working with the children. 
And then the ones for the older people are like for the super duper, I've been to Juilliard because I, I live in Atlanta. So all the companies around here have like already super duper talented, amazing yeah. people. So they don't really have room for like, you know, it's not like, do you watch Schitt's Creek and how they have no. like, they do their little small town musical and they're begging people to take roles. Like we don't have that around here. I wish yeah. they did because I would love to be, because watching my kids do it, it's like you said about the choir and how yeah. it, you get so drawn into it and it looks so fun. So that's always been something I really want to do, but I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Do you like a CYT or something? What's CYT? Community? It's like a community youth theater, but then it's youth. I don't know if they ha ever yeah, have ever had like adult roles there. They don't. And, and I was so upset because my kids were in Susicle, I want to say three years ago. And at first they were like, well, we're going to let the parents be involved and get into it. And then um, I was the only one that wanted to do it. And they were like, well, it would look too weird if there's just one parent. So then I was fired from the show before it even started. Like I wasn't fired. Mm -hmm. was awful. Like I just wanted to <laughs> you hadn't even started yet. And she was like, well, you were the only parent that wanted to be in it and we don't just want to have one so uh, oh and it was the we best only one giant in my pants I was so upset but <laughs> this is was so good this close I know I was just like uh, <laughs> it has the best soundtrack I love it. if you get everything on your bucket list then you don't have anything to strive for so I'll just keep <laughs> just keep, keep it there yeah keep love alive <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny all right, Megan, what else? For both of you, what is a book that you have an emotional attachment to? This is from oh, Carrie Ann. Oh, that's a good question. Oh my God. Hmm. Where to begin? Yeah, that's the thing. There are so many. I know I can just, my favorite, the book I read the most, and I don't even think it's the most well-written romance ever, but uh, Laura Kinsale, I don't know if you read older romances, you might know who that is, but she wrote a book called The Dream Hunter. Uh, Flowers from the Storm was her big famous one and everything, but this dream hunter was kind of obscure. But when I read it, I'm just like, uh, somehow I just feel like I'm being ripped to shreds from the inside, but in a good way. Yeah. So that would be my answer, The Dream Hunter. Um, and, and the first time I read it, it didn't affect me that way. But e with each subsequent rereading, I was like, this book is my life. I don't know. So you feel like it is your story? No, I don't feel like it's my story. Oh, I just, I just it's it. the one, it's for some, you know how everybody has their buttons or, you know, the, their thing that gets to them emotionally. Yeah, like, yeah. Something about that book yeah. just hits like every single scene. I'm like, it's just my favorite book. It speaks book. to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly have so many and then each one is for like, some other reason and then it changes you know like right did you just what did I just hear like uh, most recently Sierra Simone released Saint and it was devastatingly powerful because I'm really an advocate uh for mental health and mental health awareness and the you know message there it just gutted me. I mean, it gutted me. I was bawling, bawling, oh, relate, oh. and, you know, all this, and the people that suffer and suffer without getting help and think that there is no help. And oh my, I was like, I'll have to read that because that's, you know, like rocking that. in my seat going and bawling, yeah. just bawling. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, and she's I'll have to read such that. a great writer. I'm, uh, you know, just in awe of her all the time. So if it wasn't. I, I, her I was so excited to meet her I haven't met her yet I've been in the same place as her but I wasn't as obsessed with her at the time <laughs> as I am now but and if it wouldn't be that you're book, gone. You're like, like my all-time favorite is Sinner by her yeah same theory, so yeah just so good and when you meet her she's just so light-hearted and sweet yeah. and like I see her do these little things books. so happy yeah so happy man she's smart jeez yeah just comes That's off the page you know when I met her I was like this makes sense because she's a really sharp cookie you know it's like oh wow yeah. yeah so that's my answer all right for both of you who is your favorite author I just gave it away yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can, can say I'll, um 
I've read all of her books just multiple times, like multiple, like I try to read them once every couple of years, um, all of them. And fortunately she only has like maybe 10 books total. So it's possible, but. And do they, they speak to you differently each time you go back? Cause you're at a different place. Oh, yeah, they do. they do. It's really dark cause the sun is down this time. <laughs> Like, where's she going? <laughs> Annabelle, I think you kind of touched on this, but Amy was wondering what, si what book signings are you going to be at next? Um, I, I actually agreed to do CalypsoCon, which is in November in um, Florida, she but it's it. very small and I'm pretty sure it's sold out now. But I mean, just because she of COVID, they kept it small. So, but after that, I kind of, I used to do Shameless, so I'm kind of wide open. Uh, Wendy, that was talking earlier, my Fanabelle uh, friend, um, is he keeps sending me links to all these amazing cons. And I'm like, oh, okay. like there's the Space Coast one that she really loved. And there's yeah. one that I guess is going to be in Salem, Massachusetts, like a witchy theme. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but really Morgan in it's invited me to that Space Coast one, but. Yeah. I'm kind of Florida, waiting, Florida, Florida, you know. But yeah, because my energy is well. It's not my my energy is okay, but I have like many kids, and you know, I take care of my father-in-law now, as I was saying in my newsletter, and so I have much less ability to just take off to cons than I used to. But I'm I'm gonna try to do one a year, so we'll see what I do uh, next year. But this year is definitely gonna be CalypsoCon, um, which will be fun. So. And that, for those who don't know, it's like a BDSM. There's only, I think there's eight of us. Um, Calypso Masters puts it on and um, we go to like a BDSM club and we have all these like kind of intimate gatherings together. And so it's really, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, your turn. I, I was doing Shameless and canceled. That's it. Now that's it for the year. So, um, I think I'm doing the um, love and devotion one in San Diego. I mean, that's right, you know, next door. So I'll just drive down and do that. It's not huge. If I have to cancel it, you know, it's not going to be hotel and airfare and to cancel right. and worry about right. and stuff. Um, it's just, it's too, uh, it's, it's just too up in the air right now. Having just yeah. been treated for cancer, my daughter's severely disabled. I cannot bring this virus home to her. It will kill her. She was not able to be vaccinated because she has an autoimmune disorder in wow. addition to everything else she was going on. So it's just, I can't be doing this right now. So I want right. to get out so badly. I mean, I want, I cried when I had to cancel Shameless. I was um, so disappointed because I was so looking forward to just getting out of here. I am like, a hamster in a wheel right now. I can't, it's all I do, you know, is work. And I'm like, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm losing my mind, you know, but it's not, I can't do that. I can't, it's still not worth it to kill her because of COVID, you know, I can't. So right. yeah. Oh, that would be terrible. Oh my gosh. So. She read somewhere that supposedly, I mean, if, if there's no more variants, they're like, oh, 2022, things are gonna get better. But you know, we've heard this before, but I'm like, Eventually we'll just reach her immunity. It's gonna happen at this rate. Right. Well, I think that's what they're saying. Like, especially if, you know, if kids will get, you know, if they approve it for kids and they stop spreading it in schools and most people will either be vaccinated or have herd immunity, like maybe we could go back, you know, move past this, but it almost seems like a pipe dream at this point. So maybe. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like your family has to come first. Yeah. Everyone has to make the decision that's right for them. It's all mm -hmm. there is. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have one more question and then it's time for a giveaway. I can't believe it's already done. I know. And also I wanted to say I have this written down and I forgot already. Happy birthday, Marie. Marie's here and it's her birthday. So Hi, happy, happy birthday. birthday, Marie. Um, okay, the last question is from Victoria Wyatt. Where is one place you haven't gone but want to? And that's for both of you. Mine is Italy. I am not a fan of traveling outside of the US like that, like really far, but I always thought like that would be neat. Italy, like the countryside, Italy. Oh, and Gucci, but you know. <laughs> Italy is so beautiful. Milan, For me, and then out in the country. <laughs> yeah. 
for me, it's like me and my husband, I think we're actually going to do this because I've always wanted to go on like a Scottish castle, like vacation. So it's that in the Grand Canyon. But I think we're actually going to do the Grand Canyon maybe next year. But I'm thinking once my kids are all launch, like that's going to be my reward to myself is to do, because we were going to go before the kids and we just had kids sooner than we expected. So, so that saved for someday, but I really want to do that. I hear right now because my um, son's girlfriend, her dad, so like three people removed, but they just drove back and they stopped at the Grand Canyon and said it was like barren because it's still open, but no one's out there. No right? one's there. Because, yeah. yeah, no one's doing anything. And it, they're like, it was awesome. We do whatever we wanted because nobody was there. You know, it was great. <laughs> We just kept, you know, standing and looking wherever we wanted. It wasn't crowded. There was nobody. Yeah. So if you want to go, go now. But you get my brother in Atlanta out there, so we can kind of like we can even stay with him and go. But it's just you know, it's like you have to fly. The time to get, you know, to plan it and go is just a big problem for me. But someday I will. I haven't been there either, and I'm only a state away. I yeah. I just hear that it's really like amazing it's gotta be just mind oh, you know it's so built up in my head maybe i'll see it and be like oh, really maybe that's it in there <laughs> can comment if it's worth i've know. seen it from the air it is astounding yeah and that's from a plane have you been out there megan no no i haven't been either i think when you're california you're like oh, fuck i'll be there one day whatever it's not, <laughs> it's not going anywhere i'll get there uh, it's like not going to disneyland i hate that place I'm not going no, there. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not into that. I'm more into like scenic stuff and like I want to see things that are beautiful. I mean, Disney is fun. I get, I get it, but not for fun. me personally, I want to see something yeah. just not so manufactured. Out. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Disney. Oh, it's not my thing. But I know some people love that stuff. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> I've never enjoyed that yeah oh my god I've never enjoyed that place. well it's like you either do or you don't it's one mm -hmm. of those things where there's not really any anyone who's like oh Disney yeah. like you either love it or you're or like you don't oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I um I don't like that many people around me it freaks me out like really, yeah and the one down are getting really uh, crazy like, like really picture is in Orlando and it's sweltering so every time I've been I've been like this is hell but I think it's just the weather you know <laughs> yeah well and that humidity at least it's just damn hot out here but that is just gross because now you're that many people and it's sticky and they're touching me and oh my god like do you hear me whining I'm like, they what are touching me now yeah it's like oh my hey. god I would go nuts <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Should we talk giveaways? It's already 710. Yes. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, what are we giving away? Annabelle, what do you got to give away? Look how pretty that book is. Ooh. A book called Firebird. This is an, um, this is my second ballet book because I wrote Mercy first and it was so hard and it made so many people angry. And I was like, I really love ballet. I want to write another ballet book that's a little more accessible. And so that would be this book. He's um, so awesome, that guy. It's got some rope. It's got some funny parts. It's got some really hardcore, sexy parts. And um, it's BDSM. And But it's not like Master Slave. It's, more, you know, it's a, like dominant, submissive type BDSM. But I will sign it and send it to the winner. How nice. Um, awesome. What about you, Victoria? I have the pink one. Oh, Grant's place. You pick. You get your choice. Yeah. I love your covers, Victoria. I was browsing over all of them today, and I was like, because oh, I love like princess. Well, you know me, I love princess and. Well, know, they just redid this one. Show. It's just a special edition, uh -huh. and it has a, some bonus content in it for the Love Books box. They do a. a Mm, subscription box I couldn't remember the name of it okay and it's quarterly and so the subscription box in September was a uh, princess theme type uh I can't why am I what was it Megan like a fairy tale <laughs> fairy tale yeah fairy. and That's so they had this book and the second book in the Secrets of Stone series because that's kind of fairy tale looking on the cover it has a map yeah they all kind of have that yeah theme. and so um Bella which is my favorite favorite 
Very cute. So they added like a rose gold tint on this one. Oh, just to make it, it special. Yeah. It's beautiful. It really came out pretty. I, at first, mm -hmm. really, you just can make it pink. It it up. It. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It doesn't really come across on what I'm seeing on the monitor, but it's really pretty in real life. Mm -hmm. So some, some people, you know, didn't get in on the subscription box in time, but I have a couple of them that I'm able to, to share. So I've got it. I've got it here. So. All right. Well, me yeah. and Amy already chose the winners. So uh, for Annabelle's book, it's Amanda McCallip. All right. Good job, Amanda. Uh, for Victoria's book, it's Marie because it's her birthday. It's her birthday. Very All right. Good job. <laughs> Happy birthday. birthday. This was so much fun. Thank you so much, Annabelle. This went so fast. Wonderful. I enjoyed this so much. I was nervous before, but it ended up being so fun. Um, thank you for letting me fangirl all over you. Well, thank you for having me. And it was, was such a pleasure to talk to you. And I hope someday we will see each other in person. I'm you know? sure we'll see each other again. Come back again. Somewhere. So. But I know. It's just so funny because it was not that long ago that I just listened to those books. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> we need to talk. Well, I was so happy to be asked and I appreciate so much you having oh, me. Good. Thank you, Megan, for setting everything up. And it's one amazing that Megan. I know <laughs> it's great. Spoils me rotten. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you everyone who showed up to listen to what? Hello Buddy. I was just saying thanks. Uh, yes. <laughs> listen and yeah. wait. All right. Take everyone care. Everyone have a good rest of your night. Stay safe. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.